Pete and Cheap Homesteading and today we're going to be removing the cylinder liners and installing new ones on a Continental Z134 motor in my Massey 35. Uh, you know what? This project's been dragging on and I've been trying to get going and I feel like, you know, it's just winter is in the air and I need to get this thing going. So now we are going to remove the cylinder liners. These are wet liners so you don't need a puller or anything. Uh, you just get a block of wood and try to knock them out. Um, you either use wood, I have a piece of nylon, so the big thing is you don't want to dinge up the end so it can't go through the hole after it gets down to it, so uh, we're just going to tap this out. Get it on the edge and give it a... Go on this side. Well, it is common, it's just... That's holding on there. Holding on. There you go, first cylinder out. The best way to do this is pound it out with a wooden block or the nylon piece, but it was, there was just too much spring and the actual liners wouldn't move. Um, so I had to pound them out with a metal punch, but make sure you don't dinge up the outside edge so it's so uh, wide that you can't get it out. Uh, the right thing to do is use a wooden block, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Here is the cylinders. To show you some, look at the sludge at the back of the cylinder right there. The rest is pretty clean, but man, oh man, there is a lot of stuff on the back of that cylinder. That is crazy. That's like two and a half inches of sludge. Okay, so we're gonna clean this up. I pretty well got it cleaned out. I ran out of brake clean, so I'm gonna get another can of brake clean, cleaned it all out real good. Um, one thing to be very careful with, if you're pounding up the cylinders with a metal punch like I had to, I go around and try not to make the dings in the same place because if you jam that cylinder when it comes up through this hole, this is the weakest spot and you'll crack. So you make sure there's no cracks here, here, and here after you remove the cylinders. And if you don't, you're good to go. So now we have to do a light sanding and clean up the grooves. So sand the inside just gently and evenly with sandpaper, really fine sandpaper and scrape out these grooves where the cylinder liners slide in and the bottom surface too. You gotta make sure that you clean them out real good. We're back at it this morning and we're going to install the cylinders and it is important to make sure that this top surface, this bottom piece and the side is clean, clean, clean so the cylinder won't land on it. And we're going to give one more sand to that bottom surface and anything that could possibly rip the O-ring when we shove it in, we're going to give it a little bit of sand.
It's hard for me to show you, but at the very bottom, this surface right here, you got to look and make sure there's no pits. Diesel engines will cavitate and they'll pit the surface and then the cylinders won't seal properly. So it's important to check. The other thing is the front of my cylinder here, uh, there was an edge, so I needed to make sure that I sanded it. That's not gonna cut the O-rings as they come on. And I think this looks good. We're ready to install the cylinders. This is the uh, cylinders we got from uh, Tractor Parts Direct. They're a piston liner kit. So it comes with a piston and a liner. And the part number is A-SK105. So we're going to start laying these out. We're gonna make sure that they match up. They are the same height. The O-rings line up. They seem to be the same. That is awesome. I haven't done one of these wet sleeves for a while and uh, back in the day, I remember we just put a little bit of white grease, make sure that it slid down in there and it didn't grab the O-ring. But I looked online and it does seem like a lot of people use dish soap, just a little bit of dish soap, just so it won't grab and it pretty well dissipates in the cooling system. So I think I'm gonna just try that. So we're gonna put the O-rings on. I'm going to shove it in the groove on the far side. And we're gonna pull it over. They say, you're not supposed to just roll the O-ring over because the O-ring gets rolled. Uh, I don't know how much effect that has on the final product, but that's kind of what I ever knew. So you kind of just go, the O-ring is on, we'll do the other cylinder. Okay, so we're gonna just use a little bit of Dawn dish soap and I'm just gonna put it on the O-rings. Cylinder one is the front. We are going to, working this around to get the cylinder O-rings by the first surface. Through here and it looks good. Another tap down. You want to make sure when you're installing the cylinders that when you hit it, you kind of hit it right in the middle with a wooden block. You don't want to be hitting one side because you can actually shear the O-ring coming down. The worst part with this whole thing is that you can't actually see that you sheared the O-ring or not. That's where it comes down to making sure that you clean the surface really good and you put your uh, uh, dish soap on it and just hit it straight and tap it till it just goes in gently. Um, I can see this side and it looks all good, but you can't technically see the other side. So it's always a little bit of a, uh, you wish you could just see it and know that's good. And then the first area, you kind of just roll it till it slides in. There we go. <laughs> this last one's causing me a problem. There we go. There. There you go.
the new cylinder liners are installed and now we're just gonna see if I can find the protrusion measurement. On all engines except the Z134 motor cutout notches. Okay, so my motor doesn't have cutout notches, but all the other ones do. So I'm sure the crank or something contacts that if you don't have that lined up. That's probably a good thing to know. Here. Shim, if required, should be one thousandths to four thousandths of an inch above the block. So basically, cylinder liner protrusion is from the base of the block to the top of the cylinder. Uh, you put a, a straight edge across and you check this area with a feeler gauge and preferably at a few locations. So there's two ways to do this. If you have a dial indicator with a flat holder, the one that sits on the edge of the block and you can kind of go like this, you can see what the uh, protrusion is. The other option is using some sort of straight edge. There is proper straight edges that are like machined within thousands and thousands of inches, like really, really accurate. Uh, but you know what, for our purposes, a good quality stainless steel straight edge is probably straight enough for this, accurate enough. Um, and I'm checking here, it should be one to four thou. I've already checked and it is about four thou. Uh, ideally, you'd like to check all four corners, but with these cylinders so close together, it's very hard to do. Um, so at least if you check here, it's all about four thou. So it's to the upper limit of crush, which means it'll push it just a little bit harder. So I think that's gonna work really really good so there you go the cylinders are installed and the protrusion is checked so that's probably enough for today but uh last time i checked the main bearings and the rod bearings and they were wore out so i said you know what i need to uh track down some new bearings and i called faucet tractor supply they're kind of near i think st Catharines, near toronto anyways and they uh, were able to get me some they shipped it up and i just got it so this uh, rebuild is starting to move on uh you know what I have a lot to do. This is the last warm day and I'm going to be working on uh, my barnyard and uh, a whole lot is happening. So it's just really important that I get a lot of this stuff done because uh, winter is going to come quick and I'm pretty happy that I got my main bearings because this rebuild project is going to continue on. So, but that's about enough for today and you guys have a good one.